Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to the last reading lesson of the week. We're going to continue learning about the Arctic and Antarctica, so I'm going to share my screen with you now, and we're going to get started. Before we start looking at the text again, I just want to share with you something I find quite interesting, and that's our um, collective nouns. A collective noun is a word that we use to describe a group of animals. You probably already know some of them. For example, when we're talking about sheep, we might call them a flock of sheep. And when we're discussing bees, we could perhaps call them a swarm of bees. In our text, we have seen one collective noun to describe whales. What I'm going to ask you to do now, I've gathered some collective nouns on the left and I've gathered the animals they refer to on the right hand side. Just for fun, we haven't covered it in the story or in any of our lessons this year, but just for fun, I wonder if you can have a go at guessing which collective noun matches which animal. Pause the video now and have a go at guessing those questions. I'm going to go through them now, starting with the one that's already in the text. A group of whales is called a pod of whales. Another one that is in the text is a pack of wolves. So we've got left a waddle, a sleuth, a huddle and a colony. Now, interestingly, penguins are a waddle of penguins when they're on land. But if the penguins are in water, we actually give them a different name and they're called a raft of penguins. Um, the walruses are called a huddle of walruses because they gather together when they're resting. Uh, you could maybe you've seen pictures of lots and lots of walruses gathered together there. OK, our next one is a sleuth and that is for polar bears. And finally, one of the collective nouns for seals is colony, but they do actually also have quite a few different collective nouns, too. Um, not really related that much to our reading today, but I think it is quite interesting. All right. Today in our reading, I would like you to film yourself reading this paragraph here. Power of the pack. Take a video of yourself on Seesaw and upload it so that we can listen to your reading and hear how fantastically you can enunciate and um, pronounce the different vocabulary words. When we're going through the reading text today, please make sure you're paying attention because I'm going to be asking you some questions to think about during the uh, during the reading. OK, our introduction first then. The icy realms at the very top and bottom of our planet, the Arctic and Antarctica, are two of the coldest, wildest and remotest places on Earth. I want you to think about why those words in green, the Arctic and Antarctica, why they've been put in parenthesis. Have a think about that whilst I continue reading. But for the past four years, intrepid scientists, researchers and filmmakers have been braving for freezing temperatures to show us what, it, what life is like for the animals and people that call these amazing regions home. Presenter and wildlife expert Sir David Attenborough tells NG Kids about the new TV series Frozen Planet and reveals how surviving in these vast wildernesses takes determination, skill and teamwork. The next thing I'd like you to think about is why are the words frozen planet in italics? So why are these words in parenthesis and why are these words in italics? Have a little think. So the reason the Arctic and Antarctica are in parenthesis is to explain the extra detail. The icy realms at the very top and bottom of our planet, and then another way of saying that, or the more scientific way, the Arctic and Antarctica. Frozen Planet is in italics to show that it's um, the name of the television programme. OK, as we're going through the text today, we're going to be focusing on fact or opinion questions. So remember, a fact is something that everyone agrees to be true, whereas an opinion you might disagree with, people might say different versions of the events. So the fact or opinion question for this page is to survive in the wilderness, you need to be determined. Is that a fact or somebody's opinion? To survive in the wilderness, you need to be determined. This is quite a tough one, but for me, I would say determined is an opinion word. Any word that describes a human characteristic is usually an opinion. Therefore, I'd call this one an opinion. OK, killer instinct. Early polar explorers like Captain Scott, who set off on his fateful expedition to the South Pole 100 years ago, told stories about killer whales trying to knock humans off ice floes by creating massive waves, said David. Says David, our film crew saw firsthand how cleverly these marine mammals put this trick into practice when hunting seals. The team used underwater cameras on poles to film pods of killer whales working together to catch other whales, penguins and seals. They're very intelligent, David tells us, and employ incredible team tactics like blowing bubbles and creating waves to capture their prey. Amazing. What's the author done to make the phrase marine mammals more exciting to the reader? Also, did you notice our collective noun there, pods of killer whales? This is more interesting because the author has used alliteration, marine mammals, makes it a little bit more catchy and interesting when you're reading. OK, true or false? 
Roll Arlinson reached the South Pole. I need to find the part of the text that talks about that. This is the did you know fact that I haven't actually read yet. Captain Scott's 1911 expedition team perished after being beaten to becoming the first to reach the South Pole by Roll Amundsen. They were beaten by Roll Amundsen. He was the first to reach the pole. Therefore, he did reach it. That one is true. Well done if you thought it was also true. Stand by me. As temperatures plummet to minus 40 degrees, male emperor penguins huddle together to protect the eggs they are incubating in their feathery pouch above their feet from the freezing winds. They stand here for over two months without food through the worst of the icy Antarctic winter, while their female mate spends time feeding on fish at sea. Mm. Emperor penguins can survive in the worst conditions you can imagine, um, explains David, but they're clever. Like humans, they'll stand near to each other to keep warm or move behind each other to avoid the wind. Filming these animals was a real challenge for our team, but everyone stuck it out, just like the penguins. The Arctic is at the northernmost region of the Earth. It's made up of the Arctic Ocean and parts of Canada, Finland, Greenway, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Russia and the USA. Antarctica is the Earth's southernmost and fifth largest continent and is surrounded by the Southern Ocean. It, it's also the planet's driest, coldest and windiest continent. Brr. Why do you think the words the Arctic and Antarctica are both written in capital letters? We wouldn't normally write the entire word in capitals like that. Why do you think that is? Have a little think now. So I would say the main reason why these words have been written in capital letters is to sort of use them as list, uh, almost subtitles. We know that this part of the extract is talking about the Arctic and this is talking about Antarctica. Another reason perhaps why they've been written in capitals is because some people get confused between the Arctic and Antarctica. You can see how the Arctic, which is in the north, is at the top of the map and Antarctica, which is in the south, is at the bottom of the map. So the presentation might be another clever way to help people learn the difference between the Arctic and Antarctica. Right, the question I'd like you to think about now then is a fact or opinion. This is quite a tough one. Is this a fact or an opinion? Sir David Attenborough thinks that penguins are clever. Have a moment to think now and I'll tell you in a second. OK, this one is a fact. If my sentence had just said penguins are clever, that would be an opinion. As I said, clever is an opinion word describing someone's characteristics. However, this says Sir David Attenborough thinks that penguins are clever. If we look in the text, you can see it explains David, but they're clever. It is a fact that Sir David Attenborough has this opinion. It is a fact that he thinks they are clever. Penguins being clever is an opinion, but it's factual that he agrees with that and believes that. Power of the pack. In Canada, wolves work together to hunt one of the Arctic's largest mammals, the bison. With 25 wolves in the pack, the bison must stick together to avoid becoming prey. But the cunning canines split the herd and a young bison falls victim to the wolves. The kill will feed the pack for days. Using a high-tech heligimbal camera, the crew filmed an amazing sequence from a helicopter without disturbing the wolves, reveals David. The crew can be... The camera can be used from very far... I'm going to start that again. <laughs> Sometimes when you're reading, you just need to start the sentence again. The camera can be used from very far away and it's also designed not to shake. Essential one filming from a helicopter. It gives us a unique peek into the world of wolves. True or false? The wolves work together in order to hunt their prey. Let's find what the wolves do. With 25 wolves in the pack, the bison must stick together to avoid becoming prey. The cunning canines split the herd and a young bison falls victim to the wolves. You can see both the wolves are together and the bison is sticking together. Therefore, this one is true. Well done if you thought that was true. OK, this time I'd like you to think about the factor opinion question whilst I'm reading to you. It's the factor opinion question says over 30 percent of the planet is frozen. Did you know one third of the planet is frozen and the polar ice caps hold 80% of the world's fresh water? The lowest recorded temperature on Earth is minus 89 degrees. Home sweet home. Antarctica has no permanent human residence, but many people live in the Arctic, mainly in Siberia. Here you'll find one of the coldest cities on Earth. Norilsk, where temperatures can drop to a teeth chattering minus 50 degrees. The Arctic tundra, the region's treeless plain, is also home to many indigenous peoples like the reindeer herding Dolgan, Nenets and Sami. Life here can be tough, but communities work together to hunt and look after their families. If you ask these people if they would prefer to live in the cities with all of our comforts, they would probably say no, David tells us. They're perfectly adapted to survive here. And after all, it is their home. 
Why has this sentence been underlined? I've said the Arctic tundra, the region's treeless plain. Why are the words the region's treeless plain in um, brackets following the Arctic tundra? Have a little think about that now, as I'm going to tell you in a moment. So pause the video and see if you can work out why those words are in brackets. Just like before, we've got the explanation of what the previous thing is. The Arctic tundra, oh, well, I'm not sure what that is. Don't worry, in brackets, I'm told, the region's treeless plain. That tells me that the tundra is another way of saying a treeless plain, a place without trees that's flat. OK, in a moment, you're going to have a go at solving the independent questions. I'm just going to go through a couple of the challenges and the order I'd like you to do things in. First, don't forget that you need to film yourself reading Power of the Pack so that the teachers can listen to your flawless reading. If you want to, and I recommend that you do, have a go at saying that difficult kind of camera a couple of times. It's certainly tripped me up a few times. Then you're going to have a go at solving the independent questions. Remember, you can just do them on paper. For example, for the fact or opinion questions, you would write the first one, number one, fact, number two, fact, and so on like that. You do not need to print the sheet. Once you've done that, there's an extension. And once again, I expect people to be doing the extension. You should all have time to do the extension as there are really not that many questions for you to do for this reading lesson. I'm going to read the extension to you so you know what you're doing. Extension. It is impossible to live in the Arctic. To what extent do you agree with this statement? Instead of a normal three marker, I've given you a five mark question. It then says use evidence and information from the text and your own research if you wish to support your answer. So for this one, I'm happy for you to go and do some research if you would like to, to add and supplement what you can find out in the extract. But make sure you also use information from the text too. My advice says try to write an extended answer using the point evidence explanation structure. Each point you make should be supported with evidence, preferably from the text, but maybe also from your own research. I've said there are five marks available, and that means you should try and make at least three different points. When we've got three marks available, we tell you to make two different points. For five marks, I'd recommend making three different points. OK, what I'd like you to do now is have a go at doing that independent work. But don't forget, I'm going to go through the answers and how you could have found them in a moment. So don't turn off this video and rejoin in order to mark your own work. OK, the Arctic region and Antarctica are far away from most other places on Earth is a fact. Killer whales mainly think about themselves when hunting hard to know what a killer whale thinks about therefore I'd say that one's an opinion although if someone has done the research and they've worked out what killer whales are thinking about maybe you could have called it a fact if you're not a determined person you'll definitely not survive in the arctic again we've got that phrase determined showing it's an opinion word despite the fact that Norwich is the cold one of the coldest cities on earth it's worth a visit worth a visit is definitely an opinion OK, true or false? The team found it difficult to find the emperor penguins. We need to look in the section about emperor penguins in order to find this answer. So I'll get that clear for you here. They found it difficult to film the emperor penguins. It's down here. Filming these animals was a real challenge. That is true. A dead bison can fill, feed a pack of wolves for a few days. That will be found in Power of the Pack. And we can see here in that section at the bottom, we're told the kill will feed the pack for a few days. So that is also true. Our next question says the Arctic is located south of the equator. The Arctic is south of the equator. Now, remember, the Arctic is the northernmost region. The equator goes through the centre of the Earth, through Ecuador and other countries in the middle. Therefore, the Arctic is at the north of the Earth. That is false. And our final question asked us, the wolves were alert to the fact that they were being filmed by a helicopter. Did the wolves know they were being filmed? Using a high-tech heli gimbal camera, the crew filmed an amazing sequence from a helicopter without disturbing the wolves, revealed David. So that tells us that the wolves were not disturbed, therefore they were probably not aware that they were being filmed. Well done if you got those ones. OK. How do male emperor penguins protect their eggs from freezing temperatures? We look again at Stand By Me and we can see how, in what way, what do they do? They huddle together to protect the egg. They are incubating in their feathery pouch. So you could have said anything to do with huddling together or keeping the egg in their feathery pouch. Oops. 
Question two. Explain one difficulty Captain Scott may have encountered on his voyage to the South Pole. This one can include information from absolutely anywhere in the text. Um, the most obvious difficulty, probably, that we would say he faced is that it's very cold. Because this is worth two marks, I would then provide evidence to explain how cold it is, up to minus 89 degrees Celsius. You could also have mentioned something about the dangerous animals, for example, the wolves that travel in packs or the killer whales that can, um, there's the abstract about the killer whales that can damage or hurt humans. But because it's two marks, I would have made your point and then provided evidence for it coming from the text. OK, if you're not sure that yours is answered um, by the answers I've gone through, if you think you've got an answer I haven't mentioned, just don't mark that one and I'm sure your teacher will be able to look at it. OK, explain the benefits of using a camera to film wolves whilst hunting. So this says two marks, so two points. The question meant specifically, what are the benefits of the Heller Gimbal camera? What does the benefits, that means the good things, the things that we like of using the Heli Gimbal camera? So it's in this paragraph here. Using a high tech Heli Gimbal camera, the crew filmed an amazing sequence from a helicopter without disturbing the wolves. Well, that's thing number one. You did not disturb the wolves. But remember, it's two marks, so two points. The camera can be used from very far away. There's another point, And it's also designed not to shake. There's one more point there. So it doesn't disturb the wolves. It can be used from far away and it's designed not to shake. According to the text, how did the team film killer whales underwater? We need to go to the part of the text that's talking about killer whales and we can see it's in this section here. The team used underwater cameras on poles to film pods. So they put cameras on poles to film the pods. Look at home sweet home. Find and copy the phrase that tells us Antarctica is uninhabited. Antarctica has no permanent human residence. It's actually the first sentence there. The next question says name the three groups of people that live in the Arctic. The Arctic tundra, the region's treeless plain, is home to many indigenous peoples like the reindeer herding Dolgan, Nenets and Sami. These were the names of the three different tribes um, that you could or groups of people that you might find in the Arctic. OK, my final reminder is don't forget to film yourself reasoning uh, and to do the extension. Remember, with the extension, I'm happy for you to do your own research and add in your own points. Thank you so much for everyone who's been working hard and reading this week and we'll see you on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye.